V Evropi so počeli obejati židove in naš stanar, ko je bil često na putu v Evropi, se vratil in rekel je moje mami, da ona mora, da povigne, ima djete, ima dužnost, da spasi to djete, jako če ostati v Sarajevu, sve če jo biti ubijeni. Ja mislim, da je ona to vzela jako ozbiljno, prodala je sve, što je mogla. I osim toga, ja mislim, da si joj ljudi pomogli dobiti papire koje su trebali da prođu granicu. Ljudi koji je moj otac koji je umro kad sam ja bila četiri mjeseca prije rata. I oni su joj pomogli da izađe iz Sarajeva u Mostar i iz Mostara u Splet. Kad je moja mama odlučila da ostavi Sarajevo, ona je molila njezine roditelje i dvije sestre da se priključe njoj i da ostave Sarajevo. Moja baka i dedo nisu htjeli i tako da su svi ostali u Sarajevu u našoj kući. Mi se nalazimo u Sarajevu, ja sam se rodila u Sarajevu, to je moja kuća i odavde smo mi pobjegli u Dalmaciju kad su Ustaše unišle u Sarajevu. Sarajevo je prije drugog švjetskog rata bilo jedan od velikih, možda drugi ili treći, jevrijski centar na Balkanu. U Sarajevo je živilo oko 11,5 hiljada jevreja, in the whole Bosnia, about 14,000 people. Let's say, if Sarajevo had 45 to 50,000 people, 11.500 people, that means that every fourth or fifth people had a Jewish people. The people who were born in the city of Sarajevo were taken away from the Jews, and my mother and dad were soldiers, Oni su ostali, ali su proživjeli u Sarajevu. Imam nekoliko slika koja je moja mama snimila u Splitu i u Korčuli i poslala njezinim roditeljima u Sarajevu. Bilo je u Korčuli oko 800 židova koji su Bili tamo sve do kapitulacije Italije u 8. rujna 1943. godine. Mi smo imali priliku da u 1944. godini idemo u Ameriku. Roosevelt je dao nalog da hiljadu Jugoslavena mogu doći u Ameriku i kad se rat svrši, vratiti se natrag. I već smo bili na kamione. I onda poslije je moja mama mislila, nije čula od roditelja mnogo godina i to je bio jedan najglavniji razlog da smo se vratili da čujemo šta se desilo ljudima u Sarajevu. Danas u Sarajevu živi oko 650 jevreja. Poslije drugog svjetskog rata vratilo se oko 3000. Ljudi su došli, vratili se na ništa iz logora, iz zarobljeništva, iz zbjegova raznih. Ja mislim da je Tito htio židove van. Židovi su bili cijelo vrijeme simbol što se desilo u ratu. Kad smo prošli u Izrael, bilo je jako teško roditeljima, jer život u Izraelu je bio jako težak. Izrael je bila jako mlada država, ali su imali mir. 
nije bio komunizam, nije bio fašizam. Nadali su se da djeci, njihovoj djeci, će biti jedan dan bolje. Mi smo se oženili jako mladi, čim smo svršili vojsku. I ja sam otišla u školu za učitelje. Iza toga smo odlučili da moramo naučiti engleski kako treba i moramo ići izvan Izraela. I moj muž je dobio posao tu u Americi. Mi smo živjeli pet godina u Long Island i za pet godina smo odlučili da ćemo mi doći u New York. Ja sam otvorila malu kompaniju za nakit. U početku je bilo jako teško, ali na jedan put i za možda tri godine ljudi su uvidili moj nakit i odlučili su da to mora se metniti u svim radnjama. I polako, polako je to umišlo i u Zejl, i u Saks, i u Macy's. Ja sam na to radila sve do 1990. godine kad sam odlučila opet da idem u školu. Well, it's hard to talk about Esther as a student without talking about Esther as a person. Because when she first came to me in 1999, I met a petite woman who was determined to come and study at a graduate school in a doctoral program, because that's what our school is. It was very difficult for me, because I was out of school for about 25 years. But I had such a strong desire, and I knew that if my husband and my daughter are supportive, then I will be able to do it. I asked them, and they said, go for it. I knew that if I wanted to do it, and to get a day to get a doctorate, i da pišem tezu o židovima koji su ostavili Spansku i došli u Jugoslaviju, u Sarajevo, moram da imam najbolje ocjene što ja mogu. Ja znam kako da se treba raditi teško. Kad sam imala biznes, ja bi radila nekada nedelju dana, oko 18 sati na dan. I tako sam ja tu metodu od rada prevela iz biznesa u biznes biti student. So it was quite delightful and very surprising to find this in a woman who was already a grandmother, a middle-aged woman or older middle-aged woman coming back to school. Ljudi su se malo smijeli jer čovjek od 50 plus plus, ali moji profesori nisu ništa kazali da me ne bi diskarađu. Imala sam namjer da idem za Fulbrightovu stipendiju. Gospodja koja je bila reprezentativ iz naše škole, ona ide okolo u circle, mi smo bili jedno 30 od nas, i na jednom dođe do mene i kaže kako se zoveš i šta radiš i u kojim fakultetu si. Ja kažem, nisam mogla da je odgovorim, tako mi je bilo strah. I ona kaže, govori, govori, digni glas. Ja kažem, moje ime je Esther Gitman i ja sam iz fakulteta povijesti. I ona kaže, i šta je tvoja teza? I ja kažem, na jedan put, spašavanje židova u Hrvatskoj. A ona kaže, zašto bih htjela da pišeš o tome? Nisu Hrvati bili svi zločini, nisu svi židovi poginuli tamo. Ja kažem, znaš, možda su puno poginuli, ali ja sam se spasila tamo. A ona kaže, nevjerovatno. To je nevjerovatno. Go for it, go for it. Ona kaže, idi, napiši ponudu 
za Fulbrightovo stipendiju, ja ću ti pomoć. I think that the topic that she chose for her dissertation on rescue of Jews during World War II in Croatia was a very natural topic for her. I onda se ja sjedim opet tamo i ja se promislim kako sam ja to rekla da da hoću da pišem o spašavanju židova kad je moj moj cijeli cijelo iskustvo u university za dvije godine bilo o židovima iz Španske. Šta se to dešava meni? It was a topic that she had an inner drive to know more about herself. Poslala sam Fulbrightovoj komisiju sve papire što je trebalo i sada ja čekam. I iza jedno četiri mjeseca dobijem odgovor vi ste primili Fulbrightovu stipendiju za godinu dana u Zagrebu. I think that when she went to Croatia, and this is my own interpretation, she found somehow that she was at home. Sa mužem sam išla u, u Zagreb i tamo sam srela uh, Rabinara i srela sam Ivu Golštajna i on je bio jako dobar i, i rekao mi je da u, u Zagrebu, u e, arhivu, ima fond da je židovski fond. Taj fond je imao jedno 35 kutija i u svakoj kutiji je bilo možda 200 do 300 dokumenta. Gospodja Ester je došla sa pomalo bojažljivo kod nas u arhiv misleći da neće dobiti dovoljno dokumenata ili da dokumenti neće biti otvoreni za njezino istraživanje. Do odlaska komunizma sa scene na ovim prostorima, njeg, svi ti dokumenti nisu smjeli biti objavljeni uh, u tadašnjoj Jugoslaviji. Mi smo u Hrvatskoj stali na stajalište da svi arhivi iz razdoblja NDH trebaju biti otvoreni i slobodni za istraživanje. I onda sam odlučila da ja ću proći dokumente jako brzo i koji god dokument mislim da ima nešto o spašavanju, taj dokument sam molila da kopiraju za mene. Činjenica da je e, netko ko je ipak u poznijoj dobi se lača nečega što je izuzetno teško. Teško zbog toga što treba kopati po arhivima, živjeti u prašini, otkrivati stvari koje možda nitko do sada nije otkrio. Onda sam otišla u fond koji se zvao Ponova. U Ponovi sam našla dokumente kako su iz logora počeli izvaditi židove koji su bili jako potrebni za industriju i da ljudi mo, imaju rad jer kad su oduzeli i dali ustašima ova poduzeća, oni su mislili da zgrada i, i mašine, oni same rade i, i čine novac. I oni su sve potrošili, sav novac su potrošili i na jednom stotine, stotine Zagrebčana su izgubili posao. Ne odgovara historijskoj istini da su Ustaše imali široku podršku u narodu. Istina je da u prvo vrijeme, ja se toga sjećam, 1941. kada su došli Ustaše u grad, onda je, u Zagreb recimo, onda je postojalo neka vrst oduševljenja jer su ljudi mislili aha, sada se ostvaruje naša želja za samostalnošću ali već uh, kasnije u, u 1941. kad se vidjelo šta se događa, kako su počela ubijanja i tako dalje, to se je stubokom promijenilo. What has happened in the archives, I landed on files that were dedicated to the Jewish issues from 1941 to 1945. Actually, there were very interesting things that when I looked in the the Trushchina book, which is a book of uh, all those who perished during the war, 
I would find people that were documented as dead and then I would see them again appear in 43 or 44 and I would run to Dr. Kolanovic and say, well, how come these people, you put them as dead, but he's alive still in 43 or 44. And he told me that uh, they had to start from a certain point and it was that whoever was taken in 1941 to concentration camp, they assumed immediately that he was dead. Nije bilo dopušteno istraživanje. Smatralo se da postoje neke delikatne teme koji su samo određeni krugovi, to jest članovi komunističke partije Hrvatske u Hrvatskoj mogli istraživati. Usually historians who do not have the luxury of time to be a year in an archive and they take one uh, document from 1941 and one from 42 and then maybe two from 43, uh, can never have and find really how the process went and how rescue took place. Kad sam ja vidio kakve sve dokumente je ona našla, e, onda sam bio uistinu impresioniran. And I collected over, uh, I reviewed maybe 30,000 documents and copied 5,000. It was very easy once I categorized the, the documents. It was easy for me to find seven categories of rescue, like rescue by individual Croatian, from villages, from cities, who wrote petition letters on behalf of their Jewish friends, neighbors, relatives, and emphasizing their incredibly good qualities, loyal to Croatia, honest people, hardworking, generous. Can you imagine something like this happening that they write to the authorities, to the Ustashe, who are determined to kill the Jews, they are writing all these incredible qualities that the Jews have and they want them back. Uh, there was in, even a, a, a mother of a sworn Ustashe, Gubac, uh, uh, Mrs. Gubac, wrote to Pavlic personally and said to him, I supported your cause from the day, from day one, and here you are. You are sending this family to concentration camps, but they are the basis for us to build our country. I ask you to send them back to Evo da vam kažem, prije 7-8 dana mi je dolazio inženjer Isuka Biljo iz Hajfe, jedan stari gospodin, čija je porodicu spasila jedna hrvatska porodica od gospodje i gospodina Heberhardt, koji su nosioci ordena pravednika iz Jadvašema. Oni su njih spasili, znači... Taj je Hrvat, iako je bio u Ustaškim jedinicama, prebacio do Mostara, a onda su oni dalje i on je, ajde kažem, preživio taj rat. And there were so many of these amazing, amazing incidences that I never thought that I will find. Because even I thought initially that all the Croats were Ustaši. Nemojte ljude dijeliti nikada po nacijama, molim vas. Postoje ljudi i postoje neljudi. I u tim teškim trenucima, kad je rat, kad su konflikti, onda do izražaja dolaze i jedni i drugi. Na površinu izađu neljudi, a oni ljudi se pokušaju ljudski ponašati. And suddenly here I see a group, a large group, of people who were willing to risk their lives in order to rescue Jews. Hundreds of them signed their names. And we know that every such name, if they didn't like the person, they could send him to concentration camp just because he signed his name on such a petition. To su jako tužne priče, ali koje u sebi imaju onu poruku da uvijek ima dobrih ljudi Nisu svi ljudi zli. They were officials in the uh, and the government that assisted. 
We know that Minister of Health, Dr. Raymond Patrick, sent all the Jewish physicians to Bosnia to cure endemic syphilis. I was the first group, 20 patients, and it was like that. It was really to save the patients. We can thank the people, and I always say that the primary is Petrić, who was then the Minister of Health. Petrić decided that it is an excellent idea. The only problem was how to present it to uh, the seven ministers that were uh, making all the decisions. Petrić je to odneo na, na ministarski savjet da bi trebalo i liječnika, nema dovoljno liječnika u Bosni, je li ima tu židovskih liječnika koji nisu protiv Hrvatska. Hrvatska je protiv Hrvatske samostalnosti, zašto oni ne bi veli išli tamo dole raditi i tako dalje. In the Ministry of the Ministry of the Pavelic was silent, and he didn't say anything. Four ministers were against it, and the rest were silent. But Pavelic thought about it, and he decided that it's better to cure the Muslims and save for a while the Jews, and when the cure is achieved, they can send them to concentration camps. Then Pavelić says to Petrić, Good Petrić, how can you still be able to prove it? He says, a Jewish question is here, and they don't have to be able to prove it. Why do they have to be able to prove it? Pavelić says, there is a right, they don't have to be able to prove it, they don't have to be able to prove it, and then at the end of the day, they will do it. And in total, there were 142 physicians. So this was another way that officials in the government rescued Jews or attempted to rescue them. Then suddenly, Archbishop Stepinac. This really came to me as a great surprise. The beginning was not in the documents, really, but it was from people. His name came so often, and I was so surprised because in my mind, all the Catholic priests were anti-Jewish and, and nobody uh, uh, would ever bother to save Jews. Do 90 godine o Stepincu se nije smijel ni govoriti. Sjećam se kad smo njegov životopis koji je tiskan u Rimu htjeli dobiti, u autobusu smo ga skrivali. Jedan župnik je nabavio tri primjerka i bojeći se da će zato nekoga pozvati na odgovornost, je zakopao u zemlju i mi smo nakon 90. godine restaurirali ta tri primjerka. And suddenly I hear this name, Stepinac, Stepinac, and I say, who is this guy? And they said, well, he was the Archbishop of Zagreb. And I said, I must find everything that I possibly can about this man. And as deeper as I researched, the more amazed and fascinated I was with the humanness of this person. Dakle, kad smo bili na udaru, da se, da smo ovako se govorilo, jedini čovjek koji nas može spasiti, to je Stepinac. I thought, this is how a person of God should be. Not think which race the person is, where does he come from, but he is a human being, a God's creation, and as such, he has to be rescued. Ljudi su se u njega uzdali da će on spriječiti zločine koji su se događali i koji su bili strašni ne samo prema židovima, nego isto tako kao što znamo i protiv Srba i protiv Roma. Vi morate psihološki gledati jednog katoličkog svećenika, ne onoga 
nižeg ranga, uzmemo župnika, jeli. Nego gledati ove velikane, uzmemo biskupa dalje, on je ipak bio nadbiskup, jeli. Više oni nisu imali te moći, ti biskupi, nadbiskupi kao srednjem vijeku. Oni su igrali jednu veliku društvenu ulogu, ali moć, političku moć, one nisu imali. He instilled in the mind of the Croatian people in his sermons, in his daily talks, that we do not recognize races. There is only one race, and it is the humankind created by God. Sepinac nije bi antisemita. To je sigurno. On je bi liberalan čovjek. The Nazis and the Ustaše were very angry with him. His life was in danger. And in fact, in 1943, he was scared himself that he is going to die, not for himself, but for all the people that were under his protection. He felt that the Croatian people will suffer for years from what the Ustaše did less than two months into the war. He already distanced himself totally from the regime, and he began writing letters to both Artukovic, the interior minister, and to Pavlic, the Poglavnik, instructed them to change their conduct regarding the Jews. Although he hated communism as much as Nazism, and he was more concerned about the future, not about the present. And Pavlic for him was just a heavy presence that eventually will disappear. Naime, SS neko vrijeme za vrijeme NDH bili su zabrinuti da li se u Hrvatskoj ozbiljno svača antisemitizam. Jer je donesen neki zakon o počasnom arijevstvu koji se nije sviđao njemcima. Pa su onda saznali da je Pavelićeva žena koja je imala židovsku krv, a naročito žena do poglavnika Dide Kvaternika koja je imala židovsku krv, pa je postala neka sumlja da se u Hrvatskoj ne uzima ozbiljno taj progon židova. Pa mi je svi znamo da je učinio Zagreb, da je učinio 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 ask them to please not bomb Zagreb. And I believe that he really saved the people and saved the city of Zagreb and saved the Catholic Church in this part of the world. There are uh, 60 letters that were sent from survivors to Yad Vashem to declare Stepinac as righteous among nations. It did not happen yet. The Croatian society, when he was at the head of the society Montilio, I was then the president of eight years. Two times we gave the decision to give Stepinac the right of the right. And we gave it to Israel. Unfortunately, Others who did less than he did were recognized as righteous. But I believe that after my generation passes away and a new generation that doesn't carry any baggage on their backs will rise up and look at this document and I think that they will see what I saw some years ago. Znalo se da je nadbiskup Stepina spašavao ne samo židove, nego i čak i komuniste koji su ga kasnije sudili. Stepina saved the Croatian people and the Catholic Church in Croatia. First of all, he did not ever want to leave Croatia. Stepina's worst fear, I think, was that at one day his entire Croatian people are going to suffer because of what um, Ustaše did. We cannot say today and point out to young Croatian children and said you are an Ustaše. 
This is a philosophy that does not exist now, and they are trying to prevent it. And we have to accept the Croatian people fresh, free of the stigma, free of the Ustasha regime. One of the greatest historians uh, of the Holocaust, Jewish historian Yehuda Bauer, spoke at the Bundestag. And he said that if it will be only Germans who committed the crime, and since we resolve this problem of the Germans now, then the world will be free of crime. But we cannot even dare to think like this. Immediately a year after I finished my PhD, I applied for a a postdoctoral work at the Holocaust Museum, and uh, there were many uh, uh, professors from various parts of the world and uh, from Israel, and uh, they were very curious about uh, the topic that I have selected for my uh, PhD dissertation. And uh, when they heard that I am working on a rescue of Jews in uh, Endeha, it was quite a laughable matter to many because they didn't believe that there was any rescue. Koliko god je bilo zla koje treba osuditi u NDH, toliko isto je bilo i dobra koje su ljudi činili. Upravo na to dobro je doktorica Gitman stavila naglasak and then uh, I started to show uh, uh, the documents, especially the letters from ordinary citizens where they could not understand why they are taking Jews to, to concentration camps. When I showed this letter, really professors couldn't believe. They were so surprised. How can it be? And they wanted me to translate exactly every word that is written in the letter. And eventually they were convinced that it was done really purely on a humanitarian basis. Her book will provide another voice in a chapter with many voices and many points of view and a lot of problematic interpretive questions that remain to be. That if I am right and I interpreted correctly the documents, which I think that I did, I think that my book can make contribution to our better understanding of each other. Dalia Ofer, she is a famous uh, Israeli uh, Holocaust historian, and she encouraged me to publish this work and show the documents and to motivate maybe other people to start the research. We don't want to be exclusive on evil and just talk about the evil, but we look at the good things that these people have done. You cannot judge all the Croatian people because there were uh, uh, 28 or 40,000 Ustasha in the country. You cannot condemn all the uh, 6 million people and say they were all Ustasha. Nakon svih ratova, nakon svih strahota, uvijek uh, na dugi rok najbolje uh, iznači punu istinu jer sve ostalo je samo primirje, a nije trajan i stabilan mir na zdravim osnovama, s time da se stvari guraju pod tepih, ne postiže se trajna rješenja. It is true in every country, in every nation, we have good people and we have bad people and we cannot say all the Croats. I, I think that there were incredibly good Croats. Drugi aspekt koji je njezino pisanje izvaredno značajan, a to je pristup problemu židova, ne samo ono što su ljudi učinili tom strašnim zločinima, šest miliona židova koji je stradalo tada u Evropi, nego 
Ona je to posvetila ljudima koji su spašavali židove, koji su židovima htjeli nešto dobro učiniti. Činjenica je da su stradanja židova, a i drugih u Hrvatskoj i civilnih žrtava bila strašna. Međutim, dobro je znati da je i u mraku bilo svjetla. Puna istina je ono što je jedino ispravno i jedino ono što donosi zapravo mir i olakšanje žrtva. Ja sam dobio pismo kad sam bio student u Parizu. Dobio sam pismo od jako dragog školskog kolege o tome kako se vodi protiv nadbiskupa proces, da je trebao biti saslušan kateheta koji je iz istoga kraja, a da mu nisu dali da bude saslušan. He was judged by the communist regime and found guilty in collaborating with with the Ustaše. To je bio jedan montirani proces. Ta kaznena dijela koje su mu stavili na teret su danas sasvim nebulozna za naše pojmove. Odluka je bila donesena u napredu. Da čak znam kad je toga ja sam. Kao mladi čovjek imao posla sa Vimpulšekom, koji je bio sudac na tom procesu. Politova obrana i obrane drugih koji su branili Stepinca. I Stepinčev konačni govor bili zabranjeni cijelo vrijeme postojenja Jugoslavije. Sam proces protiv Stepinca bio suviše rigorozan i mnogi svjedoci koji bi govorili o Stepincu nisu bili saslušani. I Stepinčeva obrana i sam Stepinac izrekao jednu vrlo jednostavnu istinu, a to je da čovjek, ako ga se poštuje, Povijest koja se stvara na poštenju, na koncu, mora pobjediti. Interpretacija povijesti koja se temelji na istinskom tumačenju događanja, dokumenata, mora pobjediti. Našom apostolskom vlašću dopuštamo da se Sluga Boži, Arojzije Stepinac, od sada naziva Blaženim. I was asked many times what is my opinion regarding Stepinac becoming a saint. As a human being, if I can say, he did saintly things. What the church does with it, I cannot uh, decide, but uh, for me, he is the supreme being. Dr. Gitman je dala i Stepincu jednu novu dimenziju kao osobi koja je imala hrabrosti javno reći i ustati protiv uh, samog zla. Crkva želi reći da taj čovjek je poštivao druge ljude, druge osobe druga Božja stvorenja. Upravo je zbog toga postao blaženim tom. My feeling and opinion about Stepinac are extraordinary human being and sometimes I wish I could meet him and, and uh, uh, bow my head to him and say thank you very much for what you have done. Uh, I wish I could see him and tell him this myself.